strong demand on one hand, persistent inflation pressures on the other. How does the, what happens though when this economy cools? What happens with the stock market? Joining me now, Quill Intelligence CEO Daniel DiMartino Booth, along with the Bonson Group Managing Director David Bonson. David, I got to tell you, I don't see how. I mean, there's an 80 percent chance, 80 percent chance of three rate hikes next year. I don't see how. I, I'm not a, a trained economist, but. I just don't see the Fed doing that. Well, maybe you're a trained historian and you remember 2009 <laughs> through 2016. Exactly. Uh, I'll tell you what the odds are of three rate hikes next year. Zero percent. Mm -hmm. OK, and I'm on television right now and I'm saying that right. uh, it's not going to happen. And the reason is from history and from uh, Daniel knows this as well as anyone. The j of 2018 is not coming back. Mm -mm. Uh, the j of 19 is here. And and even apart from the Biden reappointment right. issues, which is another subject, they didn't. This is Bernanke. This is Yellen who wouldn't raise rates. 2011, 12, 13, 14. You remember 2016? They said it was going to be four rate hikes. Right. And then they sat on their hands all year. One. They did one in December after the election. After the election, yeah. yeah. So and even then, she kind of like, oh, hold up. She hit the brakes pretty quickly That's after right. that. So, so then let me let me uh, transition that then because the part of that whole thing, the thinking was before that Jay Powell came into the job, not a trained economist. I feel like he was using the, the old Fed playbook. Uh, and, and then after four rate hikes, uh, derailing the stock market, uh, almost derailing everything else, somewhere along the line, he got a, an epiphany saying the Phillips curve and, and wages don't really matter. But wages are going to be an issue. Uh, you know, listen, Deere today, the workers at Deere turned down one of the most amazing contract offers, $8,500 bonus, 30% pay increase increase over the next uh, the next five years 50 grand bonus when you retire I, they turned it down David so the wage pressure on on inflation I mean what does that do to the calculus the, the, first of all, I'm not a Phillips curver at all. And so I think that there's all kinds of contradictory data around what, what wages are supposed to do in, with inflation. Because I believe that the present policy is so ill-advised, but I don't believe that because of inflationary reasons. I believe it because of distortion reasons. So I'm in a weird camp here because I'm critical of what they're doing, but for different reasons. I think that they're right for the most part, that the inflation pressures are supply chain driven, a good portion are trans. But wages can still be impacted by right. that as well. Right. The point is, tapering has nothing to do with it. QE is not going to do anything up or down to impact wages. Wages are growing because there's a lot of people that got used to not working and they don't want to go back. Thank right. you right. very much. But on that, then, let's add rents in there because you were pounding the table huh. on rents before anyone, this Danielle. And now everyone's kind of saying, oh my goodness, because the trajectory is crazy. Tax on the lowest what percentage of, of that is, is household? Uh, 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 expenses. It's like 40% or something? It's, 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 it's about 40%. You can't ignore it. Uh, but No, you can't ignore it. And, and when you're talking about the lowest income households, it's 50% of what they're taking home. And it historically was 30%. Right. It's come up to it's 50. Come, it's come yeah. up wow. because housing has become so expensive. But w the last consumer price index print we had, rents were rising at an 0.5% rate. That's the fastest pace since 2001. 20 years. I mean, the, and this is, and this the Fed is, can ignore this is all a of creature that. of the Fed's own creation. They, they created a can they ignore it? Can they ignore it with respect to hiking? Like drunken sailors. Can they ignore it then? Can they can they can watch this happen and not hike rates? That's the problem. They're boxing themselves in because rental inflation, housing inflation, right. they're sticky, they're persistent, they're 12 or 18 month leases. This isn't going away. Let me ask you guys about the election last night. Um, I think the outcome has has weakened in uh, Elizabeth Warren's hand a little bit. Um, you know, but uh, still a lot of pressure on Jay Powell. He did not get a big endorsement from Janet Yellen a couple of days ago. David, I'll start with you. Does this change the uh, calculus and with respect on who the next Fed uh, chairman is going to be? I don't think it does. I think there's a lot of other moving parts going on, and I'd be surprised if the particular election results impact Powell much. I think there's a big question as to why he hasn't done it yet. I still think the odds are greater than 50 percent. He reappoints them. But I still want to point out for markets, it isn't like he's going to reappoint, replace them with someone more hawkish. Right. It's right. either a break even, break even, or more dovish. Jay Powell has said, I think it was maybe two or three FOMC meetings ago. It looked like he got frustrated. Someone was pounding him on the unemployment rate, which is such a, a skewed, bogus number. Uh, he kind of went away from that, and today he said it again. He said maximum employment, then he quickly said maximum participation. David, that's something that the media will never really cover, uh, like they didn't in the last jobs report. Like, oh, the unemployment rate is fantastic. 
fantastic. Sure. Not if millions of people are still out of the jobs market, though. Right. And it's something that a lot of people don't want to cover because it isn't an economic issue exclusively. It's so cultural. That labor participation decline is people over 55 and under 25. And that's the problem is that it's structural into the culture. No one talked about disability claims going up 700 percent after the financial crisis because that was sort of a backdoor way to extend mm-hmm. unemployment. I think that him talking about labor participation, Daniel talked about that uh, max uh, uh, employment level. Those are things he knows they can't control with monetary policy. Right. And they become the cover to what they end right. up not doing next year, which is raise rates. That's exactly so, right. So what's the headline then coming right now as it stands? What's the main headline out of this? Charles, the tapering language is totally counterintuitive to the way people talk. Can you imagine if we said, I'm going on a diet, I'm going to just go down from four to three to two cheeseburgers every night? That's No one would consider that dieting. Okay, they're just- That's re- why I'm not losing weight. Hey, no, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm projecting here, my friend. The, the tapering, Danielle's exactly right. Tapering is not tightening unless it leads to the rate uh, increases and it's not going to in this case. You know, it's interesting because uh, he finally, att- tackled this whole transitory thing, yeah. which has been so confusing. Uh, he certainly didn't uh, uh, consult a, a regular dictionary on that. <laughs> uh, uh, you know, so also on the uh, employment cost index, uh, they did talk about wages. He echoed what you said, yeah. David. He, he more or less said, don't worry about the Phillips curve. Uh, yeah. You know, there's, there's no correlation yep. with this inflation issue that we're going through now in higher wages. I mean, I think that's great news for Americans. Well, I think he's right. It's just that they're selectively, uh, they, they go there selectively. They're Phillips curvers until they're not. And, and what I'd like is for them to put it to bed once and for all. Mm-hmm. I, I, I have to agree. Daniel DiMartino Martino Booth, yeah. <laughs> uh, David Bonson, great stuff. Folks,